Our last view that we're going to look at is the inspector view on the right hand side. As you can see, we've created an empty game object right in here so that we can find out what exactly the inspector view is going to do for us. Now, the inspector view, if you remember, it's going to change depending on what we actually have selected. If we have a menu item selected, we're going to get different information. If we have a game object selected, we're going to get different information inside of the inspector. The inspector is just always revolving around what it is we're working with. Now, if we're dealing with game objects, there's going to be a couple of things that are almost always the same. And we're going to look at those things that are almost always the same and see what they do exactly. So the first thing we'll find is that when we have an object selected, for instance here we have the game object, at the top of the inspector we have a checkbox, and this checkbox is simply used to enable and disable the object. To the right of that is the name. We can simply select it and highlight it, and then type in a new name. Hitting enter is going to set that new name. So nice and easy to rework a name on an object. To the right of that we have an option to set static. Now, setting static is going to allow you to set it up for rendering, and it's going to also help you on the performance and optimizations for the engine. It's going to reduce the number of draw calls that are made. So this is a way we can actually improve the performance of the, our game and the objects as we're working on them by placing them as static assets. Now, below that, we've got our two options we've seen before. We have tag, where we can actually tag our object. We can untag it, we can set it to a spawn point if this is supposed to be a spawner, or maybe this is the player, we can set it to whatever it is we need, or continue to add additional tags to the object. Next to that we have the layer. The layer gives us the default layer that we start in, or we can add layers, or we can set it to the different layers that we might find this object useful in. Below that we have our transform. A transform is simply our position, our rotation, or the scale of the object that we're dealing with. And we can use our tab button to go through here. If we were trying to move this in space, we could tab it over. Now, if we wanted to reset some of this information, we could go back through and set it to 0 or set it to 1, or we can go to our little wheel icon on the right-hand side, left-click on it, and reset the entire object, reset its position, rotation, or its scale, depending on what you're trying to reset for the transform. If we do reset, we'll reset all of them back to their original. And to the left of that is a very important icon. This icon is a shortcut to the help file that talks about the components that are on the inspector. I would definitely advise using that as it's going to help out in a really big way.